What's going on guys, it's Sam right here, back at you with another video, and it's been a while, almost what, week and a half, I haven't uploaded any information, but anyway, so today I bring you a brand new video, and we're going to be talking about the Canon EOS R5, the Canon EOS R6, camera profiles, which is basically what gives this camera that Canon color science that everyone likes, and we're going to be talking about the new version of Lyron that now can read the raw files from the R5 and the R6, but it has a problem, it doesn't have camera picture profiles, and that's a problem for a lot of photographers like ourselves that love to nail the look in the camera. So today I'm going to show you a workaround how you can create your own Canon camera profile and actually bring it to Lightroom to actually render all your raw files with it, all that information coming right up. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kastan right here, and if you're new to this place, I'm a photographer from Miami, Florida. I do gear reviews, tutorials, and behind the scenes, so if you enjoy the content around here, hit the subscribe button and also enable notifications for more content like this one. Now, camera profiles or picture profiles are one of the most important things that uh, you can actually set in your camera. To me, it's one of the most important settings because it is going to determine how all your colors are going to be rendered in your image. Now, when you take a JPEG image, that camera profile actually gets baked in into the file. So when you open a JPEG on your phone or on your computer or on your iPad, the image looks pretty solid, even if you open it in a browser. Now, when you actually open a raw file in a computer using an application such as Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom needs to actually determine how it's going to render those colors because raw file is raw data. So you need to tell Lightroom a base, okay, from this algorithm, render all the colors. And this is where camera profiles actually come very handy when opening images in Lightroom because if you are able to tap into the camera profile from Lightroom, you're able to actually get those colors that you saw in the camera and pretty much have the color signs that the JPEGs have baked in, but with the flexibility of editing raw files in Lightroom. Now, with the new version of Lightroom, unfortunately, we don't have that. And I'm going to show you a workaround, uh, which is actually pretty easy, how you can actually create your own Canon's ESR5 or R6 camera profile or setting, which is pretty much uh, similar. So let's actually get started and we're going to jump in into the computer. All right, so we're here in Lightroom and as you guys can see, I have my screen split in two parts. One part, I have a JPEG and on the other part, I have a raw file. So this is going to be the first step. You're going to have to shoot on JPEG and you're going to have to shoot also in raw files. The idea here is to match up the raw file with your JPEG image. And remember, the JPEG has the color profile baked in in the file. And now I'm looking at this JPEG right here and it's pretty much how I saw the image through the view uh, finder and you know what I was trying to accomplish. But when I open this image on the other side in Lightroom, you know, Lightroom is actually utilizing the Adobe Color uh, Picture Profile right here, which is completely different than the Canon Color Science and completely different to the final result, for example, from the JPEG file. So the goal right here is going to be to actually tweak your raw files to create a similar image as your JPEG file. So there are a couple of things that you're gonna have to do in order for this setting that you're gonna be creating or picture profile or preset to actually work in most images. The number one thing is that you're gonna have to white balance before starting to shoot your picture. So as you guys can see right here, before I took this image, you know, I white balance the image and you can actually look at that gray wall that it looks pretty neutral. So the white balance was actually accomplished. Now the next thing that you're gonna ensure is that you nail your exposure in camera as well. And I know that you can actually tweak and, you know, we have a lot of latitude when grading with RAW in Lightroom, but it's gonna be very important that you get your shot as close as you want it to be. So now let's take a look at all the panels in Lightroom. And one of the first thing that you have after the histogram and all the tool is actually Adobe Color. It is actually the tab that says picture profile. And there's a reason why this is at the beginning because the picture profile is the most important thing for Lyron to actually know how it's going to understand the raw file. So Lyron is actually giving you the option here to select another picture profile. But if you don't select one or if you don't tell Lyron to use a camera picture profile, Lyron is gonna use its own picture profile. In this case, it's the Adobe RAW, but it's completely different than the JPEG. It looks a lot greener, a lot darker, and it's nowhere where I want this image to be. Now, you can actually browse for more profiles. You can actually hit this button right here, or you can click this icons right here, and you're gonna see that you get like an array of 
different looks and every time I hover over an image so basically what I'm doing is I'm telling Lightroom to utilize any of these algorithms or picture profile to decode the raw file so you have plenty of them now when you have an image that has the camera picture profile you're also gonna see it right here camera profiles and in this case we don't have that tab because Unfortunately, Lightroom and Adobe and Canon, they are not getting along. And I guess uh, Canon doesn't want to release that information for Lightroom to create the uh, proper algorithm to match up the colors on camera on the software. So now the very first step that you want to do here is you want to make the exposure similar. So that's the first thing that we're going to do now. Now we're not going to touch the white balance because as I mentioned before, I white balance the image. Now we're actually going to play with the exposure. And what you want to do is you want to try to match up the exposure off your raw file with the exposure that you get in your JPEG file. And remember, these two files were shot at the same time and they're generated at the same time. So the camera generates a JPEG and it also generates in the raw file. So I'm actually lifting the shadows a little bit, cranking the exposure just a bit. And as you can see, I can use this background as reference, you know, right here is lighter than here. So this is telling me that the image, you know, was rendered uh, lighter in the JPEG and you know I want to actually come close to that so I'm gonna be playing a little bit with the shadows with the whites and you know you're gonna make a lot of tweaks right here you can even play with the black so take a look at the blacks right here and look at you know her chest you can see that the blacks are also a little bit lifted and I actually like that now we are getting the colors a little bit similar but as you can see we still have more green and more yellow on her skin and we want to correct that so once you actually mess around with the exposure we're going to go all the way down to this panel and this one is the calibration panel now the calibration panel is actually uh, uh pretty simple you know you're going to have a slider for your tint so you you're going to be able to uh shift the color to the greens or the magentas and then you're going to have uh different sliders for every channel where you're going to be able to control the hue and the saturation of each channel uh, for example in the reds i'm able to make it more orange or more reddish pinkish and also able to saturate and desaturate and so on with the green and the blue so first slider is going to be the tint i don't think we actually need to change the tint um maybe if so a little bit towards the magenta just a tiny bit plus three right there now let's actually play with the red channel because this one you know that i know that the image needs to be a little bit more uh magenta or reddish and i'm gonna shift it more towards the red now as you guys can see it is getting a little bit closer to what I have right here. Now let's play with the greens and we're gonna actually move to every direction, see how this affects. And I can see that my image wants to be less greeny and more towards that teal color. So you can also see how the red right here actually gets affected drastically when we do that. So in my opinion, if my eye doesn't lie, it's somewhere in there. Now you can actually uh, tweak the uh, saturation. Let's say you, you know, your color comes too uh, saturated. You can turn it down there. So this is a very powerful tool, the camera calibration panel, because it really helps you fine tune your image. Now let's actually go to the blue channel. And I think I want to make the image a little bit more yellowish and warmer. So I'm going to move it towards the left which is actually towards the cyan. So there you go. Now, every time you want to reset a slider, it's very simple. You simply double click in the handle and it goes back to zero. So that's so how you're going to do it. Now, if you look at both images, they kind of look pretty much the same right now. I'm actually pretty happy. Now, this one looks a little bit too magenta. So we're going to make some corrections right there. And I think that we are pretty, pretty close. Now we can go before and after and now look at the difference. And when I put these two images one next to each other, you know, they're going to be pretty much the same. Now, another thing that you could do is you can come right here to the comparison uh, mode and you can actually see the same image, you know, before and after. And you can see right here, you know, very clear, very noticeable, uh, you know, the difference of the grape. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start doing the fine tunings and now that I have more or less the color we're going to tweak the exposure just to nail it the way I want it. Now as you can see the grays look a little bit close to each other but I think that now it looks a little bit greenish this one or eh, maybe it's my eye. There you go. So probably I am going to move. There you go. I just tweaked the white balance of hair to make it more neutral the gray and i'm pretty pleased with this image and um, you know we can start generating our preset or a camera picture profile whatever you want to call it because it's pretty much very similar what we're doing right here we are telling lightroom 
uh, some parameters and then Lightroom is going to use this information to decode the RAW file. So what we're gonna do is once we have you know, our picture the way we want it, once we actually match a RAW with the JPEG, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here in the plus sign and we're gonna hit plus and create preset and we're gonna call this one Lightroom Canon R5. So with this uh, preset, what I can do right now, and as you can see, it created it right here and I have another one that I created before, which is a little bit different. Now with this preset, we can actually go and apply to all the photos that we imported, but also we can use this preset if you're gonna be tethering at the studio to tell Lyron that every time you're tethering and brings an image to Lyron to use this preset to automatically render the image the way you want it on the computer. So you can kind of like do this step before you start shooting, you know, take a picture, Y balance it, come on the computer, you know, match up the uh, JPEG with a raw file, and then you can actually shoot the 2000 images that you know that the color is going to be pretty balanced and you're gonna have to be doing very minor grading in Lightroom. So, so we have created the preset right here. Now what I wanna do guys is I wanna show you um, another image. So I am going to be bringing this one right here and we're gonna go with a before and after. There you go. So I'm gonna reset the image. There you go. So this is the image that apparently Lightroom said that I meant to do that. But once again, we see here that it's utilizing the Adobe Color Picture Profile to render my colors and I'm not happy. So I can actually grade this image right now by simply clicking on this preset and that's it. That's all I have to do. Now you are going to realize that from picture to picture, you may have to actually may find and tweaks, but Imagine rather than going through all the sliders right now, you can ensure that, you know, with one of your own camera profiles or preset, you can actually grade all the images. So compare this, compare the, uh, the greenish of the skin. Let's take another image right here. Let's use this one. And as you guys can see, let's do it right now. Boom. Look at the difference. Look at the amount of details that we were able to actually uh, bring up. And this is the way I remember seeing the image in the camera through the viewfinder. And, you know, for some reasons, unfortunately, we don't have camera picture profile. So this is not only useful to emulate your camera picture profile, but you can also create LUTs using the same setting. Now, if you actually want to locate that file, it's very simple. After you create it, you can actually press on the Mac control or I believe Alt and they show in Finder and the computer is going to open that. So if you have another laptop, if you have another computer or you want to share this with coworkers or even make it available for the world or sell it, you can actually post the files and people can import that. Uh, preset and actually uh, being able to grade just like you. So if you have to import a preset, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here and you're gonna import preset and you're just gonna locate the preset. You know, I create one called the R5 skin, hit it, import, and it's gonna import it. So, so what this is basically doing is telling Lightroom, render my RAW file with these parameters using this algorithm and that's it. This is going to be it today, guys. So I hope you had enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop your comments down below and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. Until then, see you in the next video.